Hi, my name is Luis Carle. I'm an artist, photographer. I live in New York City. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, in Rio Piedras. My parents were really strict. And I had a lot of neighbors. We grew up in a dead end street. And my parents still live, live in the same house where I was born and raised. My father recently died. My, my mother is a retired teacher. We had a farm, we went every weekend back to study on, on weekdays. So that was my life till I graduated from high school. Then I decided to take a class in photography because I wanted to do something different. So I took a class in black and white before I came moved into the States. I decided to move to the States because when I did the class in Puerto Rico, I took all the girls from my class and we went to El Verde, which is a rainforest, and I photographed them with like white shirts and really beautiful in the water and I really did like a fashion shoot with them. So one of the girls was a model and she loved the pictures and she showed them to Melero, Arturo Melero. He used to be the top fashion photographer in Puerto Rico in the late 80s. And he, when he saw my pictures, he called me into his studio and he, he said, you see this? And he threw all the pictures to the air. And he said, you see that? You have to go north. When I first came to New York, I had to stay with my aunt in Long Island. And I spent a year in the community college, Suffolk County Community College, where I studied some business marketing. And then I, I was like, I really cannot be here. So I would love to live in the city. So I applied to Parsons School of Design. I was accepted in a photography major and I moved to the city. After, after like a year, two years of being in school, I decided to learn more, a little more, the real world. So I started assisting and working for other photographers for some magazines and newspapers and doing some fashion and doing some advertising. I did at and I did, I started photographing Celia Cruz, Ednita Nazario, you know, all these famous celebrities and my work started being published. So, in you know, my travels from between New York and Puerto Rico, I met a lot of people. A lot of these people were artists like me. But since these were the late 80s, early 90s, there was the AIDS epidemic. A lot of these artists were infected and dying of AIDS, of the virus of AIDS. So I was curious what was happening with the work. Put together a group of friends, I talked to some friends, First, I documented the work of some of them. I took their slides, I documented their work, and I started showing it around to the people that I have met through my travels and back and forth work with magazines, newspapers, and, and other you know, institutions. Found out there was not really a place that documented the work of these artists. So I talked to some friends and I said, why don't we create one? We created an organization of Puerto Rican artists called OP Art, Organization of Puerto Rican Artists. We incorporated in the year 1992. OP Art was a documentation of all the work that these artists were producing. So what we did is, if I knew you were a great artist, I would kind of document your work and create a package of different artists 
and go into a museum, go into a gallery and ask them, hey, can we have a, an exhibit? And they would go, oh, those are great artists. Let's, can, can we do it next year? I said, sure, next year is fine. So next year we had a show in a museum. We started at Museo de las Americas in Puerto Rico, the Ateneo Puerto Riqueño, uh, Instituto de Cultura Puerto Riqueña. Also, we did collaborations with New York since a lot of the artists lived in New York. We, d we opened the same show that we did in Puerto Rico in New York. So that kind of created a buzz because it was the only group or institution documenting the work of, of new artists. Because of OP art, we got a space in the Lower East Side at the Clemente Soto Vélez Cultural and Educational Center. That space I used for the office where we do exhibitions and we do events, we do readings, we do artists. It's like an artist community space where we do, we become creative. I also use it for my own studio. Uh, I, I create my own work in that space. I put exhibits together. OP Art will be next year, 20 years. So we're gonna do a big, big, big event to celebrate our 20 years. Well, OP Art kind of made people understand that we were around, made people aware that we exist and that we are part of a community. At first we got documented by institutions like MoMA, Smithsonian, taken as a sponsorship program by NIFA, New York Foundation for the Arts. But I decided to keep doing my work. I do portraits, I do landscapes, I do art, I create. So there is no limits to my work. I can do a fashion show behind the scene. I can do a fashion shoot. I can do an old lady in the country. I can do, you know, documentation photography. So uh, now uh, I also learned to do digital. So it's, it was a process from film to digital because uh, when I was working for advertising and magazines, we used to do deal with film. And when the industry changed to digital, all this work disappeared. So that's when mostly I concentrated in the arts. I put a lot of my work in Facebook. Uh, as when I take some new pictures, I publish them in Facebook and I get the immediate reaction from people. So I know when I create an album, I know exactly which pictures are best because people instantly make a comment. Either they click on like, or they click on, they say something, or they send the picture to somebody else. So it's a great media, it's a great uh, venue for showing your work. You know, I just want to tell people to check about us online, so you can look for Opi Art Organization of Puerto Rican Artists. You can look for me, Luis Scarlett. Thank you for, for making us what we are now.